What's up guys, it's Widgeon TV here, and welcome back to another weapon comparison. In this video, we're going to be talking about the light bow gun and the heavy bow gun. Alright, so before we go any further, let me give you a disclaimer. It's that this is absolutely not a comprehensive guide to both of these weapons. Obviously, I'm going to leave a few things out, because like I said, this is not a weapon review, it is a weapon comparison. So keep that in mind as we move forward. So now that that's out of the way, let me show you how I'm going to compare these two weapons. In my past weapon comparison videos, I would compare the weapons directly against each other other, find out which one did that specific task better, and then give each weapon a win and a loss. Now I experimented with that idea when comparing these two weapons, but it ended up not really working out. So what I'm going to do in this video is just tell you the strengths of each weapon. I'll be separating them on this chart right here. So hopefully that's not too confusing, and if it is, hopefully that clears up throughout the video. Alright, so let's take a look at the two weapons that I'm comparing. First, with the light bow guns, I have the high chain blitz 1, which is rarity 3, and then for the heavy bow gun, I have the steel assault 1, which is also rarity 3. Now these weapons don't matter as much as they did in my other reviews, but I still needed two weapons at the same level to compare base stats. And as you can see, both of these weapons are comparable because they both do 130 true damage. If you haven't seen my other two weapon comparison videos on the hammer versus greatsword and the lance versus gun lance, I would highly recommend going and watching those now, because I'm going to glaze over some of the calculations that I'm doing for the sake of time, and I think both of those videos do a really good job of explaining things. Alright, so now that we're through with that, that. Let's take a look at the first thing that I compared, and that was the damage. Now this may seem obvious to some people, but I have a suspicion that a lot of people were like me. I thought that the light bow gun did less damage than the heavy bow gun. Now this is true in a lot of ways, but as far as single shot damage that I'm going to demonstrate to you with normal ammo too, it's that both of these weapons do the exact same damage. Now both of these weapons do the exact same damage with every ammo type that I tried, so if you were anything like me and thought that light bow guns did less damage than heavy bow guns, interesting enough, that's not true. But it is also absolutely not the end of the story when it comes to damage. But like I said before, as far as single shot damage, they're the same. So I'm going to put damage on both sides of this chart. Alright, so next up, let's take a look at both of these weapons' mobility. Now obviously, mobility is one of, if not the biggest reason, people pick the light bow gun over the heavy bow gun. So the light bow gun should run away with this category, and well, it kind of does. The runtime with the weapon equipped is way faster than the heavy bow gun. The draw and sheath speeds are way faster also. These two things with faster ADS walking speed, ability to do a normal roll with the weapon equipped, and this fancy dodge slide thing that you can do after shooting, comparing the light bow gun to the heavy bow gun is really not fair. But not all is lost for the heavy bow gun. While I was using it, I ended up using this roll move a lot, and I loved it. The heavy bow gun roll goes much further than a normal roll, and in my opinion, it just feels good. Also with this roll, you can nearly keep up to the light bow gun when it comes to rolling speed. So my recommendation is, if you need to move around with the heavy bow gun equipped, you need to be rolling. But that all being said, the light bow gun easily gets the handling check mark. So I'm going to move mobility over to the light bow gun side. So next up we have ammo variety. Now this one's pretty easy. The light bow gun does have more interesting loadouts on each weapon when it comes to elemental damage, but we'll be talking about that later in the video. The heavy bow gun has two ammo types that cannot be found on the light bow gun. That is the devastating cluster bombs, one through three, and wyvern fire. These two ammo types are key for every heavy bow gun build, and in my opinion, one of the most important parts of the heavy bow gun. And like I said, you cannot find these ammo types on the light bow gun, so ammo variety is going to go to the heavy bow gun. Next up, let's talk about the light bow gun's elemental damage. Well, each bow gun, light and heavy, comes with a loadout of ammo specific to that weapon, and with light bow guns, there is always a far greater amount of elemental ammo types that you can choose from. So while the heavy bow gun might have paralyzing ammo, the light bow gun might have paralyzing ammo, sleep ammo, and poison ammo all together. This is one of the reasons why a lot of people call the light bow gun a support weapon, because inflicting status effects is one of the best things you can do with this weapon. The prevalence of the fast reload modifier can be found on a lot of these ammo types as well, while with the heavy bow gun you pretty much don't find those anywhere. So sticking with the positives about the light bow gun, let's talk about burst fire. So burst fire 
is an ability that can only be found on the Libo guns. It lets you shoot ammo in burst fire mode. This can be really effective with normal ammo, but when you switch to spread ammo, it becomes devastating. And because the three round burst only takes up one shot in your magazine, it really helps you maximize the damage from your ammo. All around, burst fire is a great thing to have on a weapon. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the heavy bow gun. One of the biggest things that you'll notice when switching from a light bow gun to a heavy bow gun is the extended magazine size of the heavy bow guns. On average, you have about one or two extra shots in each magazine with every heavy bow gun. There is not a lot to say about it, but it is definitely noticeable and nice to have. And another really nice thing about the heavy bow gun is the fact that you can attach a shield. This activates when you're aiming down sights and can be a great replacement for the mobility of the light bow gun. Instead of moving out of the way, you can just tank it. And like I said, this is only available on the heavy bow gun, but to use it, you do have to sacrifice damage or reload time. So I'm going to put the shield on the heavy bow gun side. So that's really the only differences between these two weapons other than their two X factors. And the X factor for the light bow gun is the ability to place mines. Now the mines that you can place can do a ton of damage, depending on how and when you use them. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this is not a guide, so I would check out a different video if you wanted to learn how to use them properly, but they can be truly devastating in the right hands. And for the heavy bow gun, you have two different kinds of X factors. You have the wyvern snipe and you have the wyvern heart. The Wyvern Snipe can do a ton of damage on bigger monsters, but it doesn't do so well on the smaller ones. Wyvern Heart, on the other hand, can do a ton of damage to anything. This is the one that I prefer. You're basically given a fully automatic machine gun for a short period of time, and it feels great to use. All three of these special attacks definitely have their own use cases, and while one may be really good in one situation, it may not be as good in another situation, so pick wisely. So that's it. That's all I have on these weapons. If you want to know my opinion, I think if you're coming from a heavy hitting melee weapon, you should definitely go to the heavy bow gun. If you're not coming from one of those weapons, and you're coming from something like a hunting horn or a sword and shield, I would recommend going with a light bow gun. I think this because the sword and shield and the hunting horn are kind of support weapons, and so is the light bow gun. So I feel like those people would fit in with that weapon better. All right, so there you go. There's my opinion. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and consider subscribing. It really helps out my small channel. Also consider following me on Twitter. It's the best place for me to keep in contact with you guys. But anyway, this has been Widgeon TV. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.